talk out that currently Kathmandu, Oppur and Nepal hasn't gone through the full detailed process. So where does this resilient scorecard sit in the process? And I sort of see it sit in two places. One place where we are at the moment is looking potentially at the long-term recovery of how looking at building resilience within cities. So undertaking the assessment, and that's almost where we are today. Um, but also looking at the preparedness and improving preparedness to um, future disasters. And this is an essence of the Zillion scorecard, and it does caveat the some of the chronic stresses such as climate change, sea level rise, um, and, and a variety of different things. So it's really focusing on the impact of disasters, uh, both geological and meteorological, we won't use the word natural anymore, um, man made disasters, and also biological. And it's split up into 10 pillars. Now, I will caveat now that I've never done an assessment personally on the full 10 pillars because it requires the interaction of social scientists along with engineers. I'm, I've really focused on the engineering aspects and that's what I'll talk about here. Um, so the one specifically of interest is looking at identifying and understanding the use of current and future risk scenarios, so that's where my expertise in sort of geohazard feeds in. Um, and that feeds into sort of essential two, where it's a process to look at what hazard assessments have been undertaken, what's our understanding of hazards, how we share that knowledge with all the different stakeholders, um, how we then take that through to our knowledge of exposure and vulnerability of building up our risk assessment, and also understanding cascading hazards. So for example, an earthquake in, in Nepal um, initiating fire is, is quite a common event that maybe is not considered in, in the fault sequence or risk sequence events. And it's basically scored from 0 to 3 in the preliminary assessment or 0 to 10 in the more detailed assessment. So this is what some of the work looking at sort of the land sites um, that I did looking at. So a report is done annually. Um, so there's lots of data that exists to understand this both our historic assessment um, that can inform our future. So what that identified is there were areas, for example, like um, geohazard assessments for the strategic roads. Some of that worked on by Scott Wilson and Paul. Scott Wilson um, is, is quite old. Um, and there's also the school of thought that with potentially road construction that you can actually, there's a new chain of thought, that you can precondition slopes to future hazards, future landslides, both earthquake-induced and monsoon-induced by building roads. So it was looking at, and we undertook an assessment, looking at sort of understanding with an example of landslides, looking at current and future risk scenarios for Nepal. And what we identified and what we built 